Alright, here we are on the Nostaris private vanilla World of Warcraft server. This is the PvE server, and we are in Teneris today. And if you take a look where we are on the minimap and check the coordinates, you can see that we are kind of on the eastern side of Neris, and we are going to find the Caverns of Time today. It's one of the coolest hidden areas in vanilla World of Warcraft. So we start off by just running up this hill. This is actually the side of the uh, sort of Caverns of Time area. You can't go up the main entrance. I'll show you that in a little bit. You have to run up this sort of path along the side here, and it's fairly easy to get up here. You will eventually hit kind of a little rubble, uh, not a rubble, a little rubble piece. You get kind of stuck. You have to kind of do some jumping to get over that. So you can see it's a little bit of a struggle to get up some of this spot here, but it's, it's not too difficult. Um, but you really will just, just keep spamming the jump button, just keep kind of wiggling left and right. Uh, you'll eventually get up there, and uh, you'll get one last little kind of stuck spot at the top. But once you clear this kind of big ruin piece, then it becomes much, much easier. And we have a much easier time from here on out. It's very simple. Okay, so once you're past those ruins, uh, you just go up the hill here. And you run along this hill. Then you come up to this big structure, this big tower. And there's actually a little lip here. It's really hard to see from a distance. But when you get up close, you can see there's actually a small little lip along the edge that you can simply just run along. So just follow along very closely to that and hug the wall. Very easy. Um, it's very hard to fall off of this as long as you just keep kind of running into the wall along the way. You won't have any problems. And as we come around here, I, on the left side of the screen you can actually see what is sort of the front of the Caverns of Time. This is into Teneris. And you actually, there are some quests in this area. They have to turn in much higher level quests, like around level 60. And you can see uh, Anna Kronos, that big dragon down there. Uh, but basically, if you try to go in that way to get into the Caverns of Time, as far as I know, there's no way to do it. It's, there's no passable way into this area. Uh, so once you get up here, kind of around this lip, you need to jump down. I think most characters can survive this fall. Rogues definitely can. But I'm not totally sure. So as a mage, it's much easier for me. I just cast Slow Fall and then just jumped off the cliff, and that makes it very easy. Um... And if you cancel slow fall, you just fall straight down. That's what I did here. I just made sure I wouldn't die. You come to this purple wall, and then very simply, just jump into the purple wall. Just like that. Super easy. And you fly right through. Now you're in the caverns of time. This big stone structure on the screen, now this is the back side of basically the door that blocks the caverns of time. Uh, but once you're here, now we're inside. You can see in the mini-map in the top right, caverns of time. Uh, it's very... I just like say this again. This is maybe the coolest area in Vanilla World of Warcraft. I don't know. I wish it was available for people to like, see more easily, uh, but we're obviously exploring it today. So and showing you how to do this if you want to. We can see as you come around the corner, there's a few kind of uh, sort of wooden buildings built into the rock structures. Those are kind of neat. You can see in the distance sort of that starry sky, uh, a few trees, and it's sort of a strange thing. We're in a cave, or looking out into the starry night sky, which is no starry night sky when you're out in Tenere, So. Very weird. Uh, there's some sort of dwellings built into the walls here. Some bearskin rugs. Uh, very simple, sort of, almost looks like like Night Elf uh, design, sort of. If you go to, like, Teldrassil, kind of looks like that in some of these little huts. Uh, it's a, this is a huge area, by the way. I mean, if you notice, this video is something like, I think, almost like 20 minutes long. And uh, the reason why it's so long is because there's so much to look at in the Caverns of Time. You can't mount in here, by the way. So... There's a downside to this, you can't mount. So if you're a druid, you can go into cat form. Hunter, you can do uh, Aspect of the Cheetah. Um, if you're a mage, you can blink around, which speeds you up a little bit. All the other classes, you just have to hoof it. Kind of unfortunate. Uh, so now we're coming up to another cool spot in the Caverns of Time. And this is like a major theme here. And if you look at the minimap, even, you can see where we are. We're still under the same spot in the Caverns of Time. Uh, in Teneris. <clears throat> but as you come up to this part here, it's really cool. It's more of these columns. And this kind of, uh, I don't even call this aura, this aura, of this like purple energy just kind of flowing, almost like a, a river. Very cool looking. I don't think this effect is used really anywhere else in Vanilla World of Warcraft. Not that I can think of. Not, not to this scale. It's very large and very cool. Uh, and then in the background, there is this kind of like shining light. It's like ray of light kind of shining in through the opening there. You can see when we jump down, there's even this like asteroid field kind of floating in the distance. It, they're just 2D flat images. Um, but they make it, it looks for a very cool effect as they layer them on top of each other. So it looks, it gives it some depth. And you kind of see that, that shining light, there's not really any source of it when you walk up to this little uh, window here. It just, light just shines in for some reason. Uh, one of the creepier things down here, really creepy actually, is this boat. 
these poor skeletons just sitting there. Um, I don't know the significance of that. Uh, but it's very creepy. <laughs> it's really creepy to me. Um, I don't know why the Blizzard decided to add that. Now you can see there's that uh, purple aura that I was talking about earlier. It still flows along kind of to the caverns of time. My gnome's got this weird thing going on where he's like running in place right now. I don't really know why he's doing that. Like if I hold still, he still runs in place. I don't know what bug I glitched him to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, there's this like floating planet in the distance. More asteroids or meteorites, comets. I don't know. Here's the kind of the gnome kind of running in place. Um, so I guess I'm just describing everything to you. I don't know. There's nothing else to do here. There's nothing to do in the Caverns of Time. There's no benefit to being here. It's still Simply, it's a really cool spot, and maybe my favorite place in all of Vanilla World of Warcraft to explore. And there's probably things in here that I'm missing when I run through it. And you can see there's more of these kind of uh, huts on the side. There's cannons, cannonballs, wells. This looks a little more like a dwarven house to me for some reason. I don't know. It's, on, it's kind of tilted on its axis there. It's kind of interesting. Um, this looks like a kind of an orc building. So to me, I don't really know exactly if there's some significance to this, but in the Caverns of Time, many of these buildings are designed after the the buildings of the various races. We saw uh, Night Elf, we saw Orc, we saw uh, Dwarf so far, and I'm sure there's uh, Human, Gnome, uh, Undead, etc. And now we come to this big open room. It's actually, in the center of the room is this giant kind of... Uh, I don't know, ethereal hourglass is what I would call it. You can see the sand, sands of time, I suppose, with that is draining out uh, forever. It seems like infinite amount of sand. And you sort of see the outline of the uh, hourglass there, it's sort of the aura of it. Um, not like a solid structure, but sort of the glow related to it. You can see now the kind of the top of the cave opens up in this area. We can see a lot. If we look straight up, um, very, very kind of starry skied with some planets, very, I don't know, astrological, maybe is a word for it. Um, every now and then I check in, like, general chat, because I'm worried that, like, uh, GM is going to, like, whisper me and be like, hey, why are you there, and, like, threaten to ban me or something. Actually, for the record, I read on the forums months ago that the Nasarius team will not ban people for exploring in WoW. Oh, before we talk about that, also you notice on the screen, like this little blue wisp in this boat here. I don't know the significance of this either. I don't I didn't see this anywhere else in the caverns of time. Just this, it's almost like a flame, but it looks like a wisp to me, and it's only in that one lantern. It's not anywhere on the other one over there. So uh so we're gonna go around, keep looking around the caverns of time. You can see now on the mini map we're actually way out in like kind of the central Tenaris. There's these kind of runes, these uh glyphs on the ground in here, couple spots which I assume at some point maybe were meant to be like teleports or something, but they never implemented them. If you run through them, nothing happens, obviously. Um, what I was saying is the Game Master's GMs, someone posted on the forums, one of the Nostarius developers, I think, and said, okay, <clears throat> we will not ban people for exploring in Vanilla World of Warcraft, as long as they're not using any exploits to do so. So if you're using like a map hack or something, I don't know what you call it, um, that's not allowed. Oh, this tower, by the way, I would call this like a human architecture. So this is like the human building. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we saw the other race buildings. But yeah, so the GM said there is no... Um, they will not ban you as long as you're not exploiting anything. If you're doing like wall hacks or map hacks, anything crazy like that, they will ban you anyway for using those, regardless of what you're doing with them. Uh, and as long as you're not using these ex like uh, explorations to um, gain some advantage. For example, uh, I found a way that you can go from Teneris to Silithus by walking around the terrain, if I were to do that and use that in any sort of advantageous way, like bypass all the mobs at a low level and then get the flight point or something, that would be a bannable offense. But I don't do that, obviously. I don't want to get banned. I, I just like exploring. I like seeing things you can't see otherwise. So uh, here we are, another one of these runes on the ground. Um, again, it doesn't do anything. Looks cool. Looks, I think, identical to the first rune. Um, so I don't know if there's any significance or any relationship between the two. Uh, as we're coming around the corner here, you can see there's even more of these kind of flowing auras. This is like a different color. This one's like a sort of a pinkish color. And we actually see the entrance to an instance here now. The kind of that uh, blue swirl that we're all familiar with. And unfortunately, as you'll see, 
Uh, it doesn't send us anywhere. We don't get uh, any benefit by running through there. Um, nothing happens. And actually, there's an invisible wall. There's always an invisible wall behind those things. Um, normally, you can't get to that wall because you get teleported into your instance. But yeah, there's an invisible wall there. There might be ways, and I didn't spend a lot of time doing this. There might be ways to bust through those walls. Like if you kind of jump on the edges or something, try to blink, things like that. Sometimes you can get through things. Um, I didn't really spend any time trying to do that. I'm not planning to. Uh, this is kind of a cool view here, I thought. It's like you can see the aura is kind of uh, pulling in to the uh, hourglass in the center. See that planet or the moon or whatever that is in the background. You see the starry sky. You can see the structures that are left and right. So I wanted to stop and take a quick screenshot for myself. Um, possibly make that the thumbnail for the video. Hmm. So we are slowly coming towards an end of the exploration in the Caverns of Time. Like I said, if you, actually, in fact, if you could decide to uh, go into the Caverns of Time yourself, uh, let me know in the comments below if you find anything else interesting that I missed in this video. I tried to run around here a bit. I spent a bit of time before I recorded this kind of running around here a little to see if I could find anything uh, very unique or hidden. Like, there might be ways to get up here onto the sand off to the left on the hourglass. I'm sure there's other things you can do here. To the extent of my knowledge, this is basically everything. Uh, well, I'll show you a little bit more still. There is a way, and I'll show you this towards the end here, uh, how to get on top of all the terrain in the Caverns of Time, which gets you up very high. And I think that would give you more potential to find ways to jump into cool spots within the Caverns of Time. Uh, but I haven't done that myself. I tried to get up on this boat a little bit. I never could find a way. Uh, I wanted to get up there and see what that wisp thing was a little bit more closely, but haven't been able to get up there yet. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, if you get up on the terrain, which I'll show you, like I said, in a few minutes, you should be able to get on top of that boat by jumping down from up top, but that's okay. <clears throat> so, as we're coming along, we actually kind of ran by this area earlier. We didn't go over here to explore this. Uh, there is another instance entrance here, and I never played, I think it's Cataclysm, where the Caverns of Time became an actual instance. I don't remember which expansion. I've could be wrong on that. I think it was Cataclysm. Uh, you might find that this makes some sense. There's a couple instance entrances. I think the Caverns of Time, once they were released as an official instance, had several different areas you could go to. You go to like Old Hillsbrid, I think. Um, I can't remember what other periods of WoW you could travel to through the Caverns of Time, which I heard is a really cool instance. It seemed really cool on paper. I never tried it, like I said. So I'm guessing these different instance entrances were intended to be that kind of an arrangement where you could go into like old Hillsbridge, for example, or maybe like, um, I don't know, like Draenor or something, like different areas in WoW's past. I also noticed, actually I miss this all the time when I come through the Caverns of Time, I always forget about the statue up ahead to the left. It's a very ominous statue. It looks like the statue outside of the dark, the dark portal, I think. That's what it looks like. The the portal that tell I think that's what it's called. The portal that teleports you to Draenor in the Burning Crusade. Kind of looks like that, or maybe like maybe it's the same thing. The uh, loading screen for WoW Vanilla has those type of statues. They're very creepy looking. I don't I I've said significance a lot in this video. I don't know the significance of those statues either. So if you know, let me know. I'm curious. Um, and this is the third, and I think the final entrance or would-be entrance into the Caverns of Time instances. I don't think there are any more. You see we hit the invisible wall again. And I think that is uh, pretty much the extent of the Caverns of Time. And I've mostly shown you all the way around. So there are um, a, I don't know exactly but I think this is about all there is in here. I like I said, I think you can find some more cool things within the Caverns of Time that I'm probably missing. Uh, but the last thing I'd like to show you is how to get on top of the terrain in the Caverns of Time. I think this opens up a lot of possibilities uh, for opens up a lot of possibilities for exactly how you can uh, really explore the Caverns of Time a little bit more thoroughly. And uh, to be fair, I didn't find this uh, sort of secret to get on top of the terrain on my own. Uh, I didn't invent it. I found this from another YouTube video, which I'll actually link in the comments below. But I wanted to share this uh, just to give my discussion of the entire Caverns of Time. Um, so, 
you get up here, it's very easy to get on top of the tower, run up with this rock. You can see you're already on top of the train a little bit. You actually can just run right up this ste relatively steep hill here. You can path right up it, it's fine. Uh, this gives you a lot more maneuverability now when you get up here. To you basically can almost run around the entire Caverns of Time. However, you'll notice the camera, if you face it uh, in towards the Caverns of Time from the outside area, it messes up everything, you can't see anything. So you have to basically face the camera outwards while you're running around or kind of along the edge, you can't face it inwards. Uh, but you see we're running along here. One of the weirdest things about this, it's so dark. It is the darkest area in WoW I've ever seen. And there's something crazy about the lighting here. You can see our fur bog is turning red, first of all, uh, which is something the lighting. But as we get closer and closer to this like dark uh, crack here, we like our character literally loses almost all coloring around. Like there's nothing there. It's really creepy to me. Like I kept feeling like I was gonna like fall off into some unknown abyss and lose my character. And you can see we actually eventually get to the lighting point where we can't even see our character. It's what I would call the darkest place in WoW. I've never seen anything that is this devoid of color in WoW, uh, and it's some weird. Like obviously the zone is incomplete, and certainly this is basically a hidden zone that's incomplete uh, in a kind of upper area you probably shouldn't get to anyway, even if this was a complete zone. So it's very, very, you know, unique circumstances to get that kind of coloring. Um, but that is basically it. So once you're up here, you can explore for yourself a little bit more, maybe find some cool things to jump onto, I don't know. Um, but that's pretty much all for today. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to show you how to get here. But otherwise, that's all. Thank you for watching.